morning. Good morning. See everybody. Nice crowd out today. Nice day for it and uh, not too hot for a change. Uh, a couple quick things. We want to uh, congratulate uh, Mr. and Mrs. Henry Klein. Uh, that would be Krista Frazier and uh, Dave. Uh, we're married yesterday, so we wish Krista and Dave a long and blessed life together as they begin their, their life as husband and wife. Uh, Eileen Hempelman has been moved to Good Shepherd uh, and is there. She's having a little trouble walking, so we're hoping she gets her legs back under her and uh, can come home soon. But for now, she is at Good Shepherd, so please keep her in your prayers as always as one of our homebound members. I think those are the two biggest changes we need to let you know about. Um, so with that, uh, oh, and also uh, we, we always post uh, thank you letters and acknowledgments and things like that on the big bulletin board in the gathering room, but we're not there, so you don't get to see those quite as well. So I'll we'll let you know that we did receive a thank you note uh, for those of you who contributed to United Lutheran Seminary. Uh, we did receive a uh, thank you letter from them for our contribution and support of seminary education and preparing uh, for new pastors. So with that, let's uh, turn our hearts and minds to worship as we begin with confession. Please stand. We gather as we always do in the name of the God of our baptism, gathering in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, we, we confess, confess that we, we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. Forgive us, and give us strength to turn from sin, and to serve you in newness of life. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. God of all peoples, your arms reach out to embrace all those who call upon you. Teach us as disciples of your Son to love the world with compassion and constancy that your name may be known throughout the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from the book of Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord, and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it, and hold fast my covenant. These I will bring to my holy mountain, and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, I will gather others to them besides those already gathered. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Second reading is from the book of Romans. Paul writes, I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people, whom he foreknew. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were once disobedient to God, but now have received mercy because of their disobedience, so they have now been disobedient in order that by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in a disobedience so that he may be merciful to all. The word of the Lord. Thanks. 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 
Please stand for the reading of the gospel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, Lord, to whom, whom shall we go? go? You, you have, have the, the words, words of eternal life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Holy Gospel is according to St. Matthew, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Lord. Jesus called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, Explain this parable to us. And then he said, Are you still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But whatever comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles. For out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person. But to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. And Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Please be seated. We continue our journey with Jesus through the Gospel of Matthew. We're kind of in order now, and we continue our reading through the letter to the Romans. We'll have another few weeks of that. Um, but today's lessons kind of stack up, which is unusual. When we're doing that Lectio Continua, that continued lectionary, a continued reading um, through the letters during the, the Pentecost season, it's not often that the, that the lessons line up. Usually there's, there's an effort on the part of the folks who put the lectionary to get together to uh, tie the gospel lesson to the Old Testament text that would relate to that in some way. Um, but today, we get lucky. All three are tied in together. And so let's look at these. We are in what Martin Luther King Jr., uh, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., called the most segregated hour in America, the hour of worship. When white folks go to their church and the black folks go to their church and, and other folks go to their own churches, uh, Koreans or, or wherever. Um, and I think it's, it's in part because our communities have not overlapped sufficiently that our lives overlap and, and so we get an identity where we invite our friends and our neighbors and because our communities don't overlap as much the invitation to folks to come to our church is folks who look like us and who act like us. And, and we have these kind of blinders on that we don't know each other's traditions and we don't know each other's understanding of worship and, and the different styles of worship and how that all comes together. But more than that, increasingly, we are seeing a breakdown in our culture as we increasingly define people as them. And we get them and us. And there are large parts of our culture and our society that see us as the good guys and them as the bad guys. And if only they would understand things, then they would come around to our way of thinking. Because, you know, we're right, right? Yeah, you're saying yes, you're just setting me up here, thank you, okay? There are things we can learn from other people. 
There are conversations we can have. And, and if we get to this, uh, you're out and I'm in, then it doesn't work. And it doesn't work in society, and it doesn't work in the church. And so I, I remember I, I had a woman in, in one church, and she said to me one Sunday, she said, you know, Pastor, uh, a new family moved in across the street, and they have two teenage boys. And I said, well, I'll go over this weekend and make a visit and invite the boys to youth group. And she said, no, they're not the kind of people we want in our church. So I kind of left that alone, feeling sorry for them because I wasn't sure what kind of reception they would get. And I thought, I'm not going to set them up for that. But when I got to the next parish, a young woman came in and she said, this is my fiance, we want to get married, and he needs baptized. And he was one of those two teenage boys. And I not only did their wedding, but I baptized all four of their children and the dad. It was a family that was looking for church. But folks in the church said, they're not our kind of people. And, and sometimes we send subtle messages about our kind of people or our place. You know, have you ever been a visitor in a church and you walked in and you sat down because you weren't sure and somebody said, you're in my pew, right? Or somebody says, I'm not going to let that happen in my church. Well, I always thought this was Jesus' church, and we were just guests. We were part of the body of Christ by Christ's invitation. That's what Paul says in the letter to the Romans today. So God has this vision of something bigger. And, and you read that first lesson that Pat read, and you... you hear that call that Israel has to go back and reestablish Zion and Jerusalem so that everybody else can come. So that the whole world can be drawn to the city on the north. To the holy city of Jerusalem on the north side of Mount Zion. And Paul addresses it to you. In Paul's time, there was a, a debate, and, and you still hear this in some circles if you really immerse yourself in things, that, well, now that the new covenant, that the new testament has come, the old covenant, the old testament is, is thrown out. And so the Jews have been disinherited, and only the Christians will go to heaven. And right here in this letter to the Romans, Paul says, that's not the way this works. Once you have received grace, you can mess up a lot, but God still loves you. And if you are under a covenant with God, that covenant is not going to go away. That covenant is irrevocable. And so the Jews continue to be God's chosen people, and now we have been grafted into that vine. We didn't become a new plant then. We became part of the same plant. And so you, you get to see that a little bit in the gospel lesson in the first half. There's actually two different stories in two different places here. It always makes me crazy when they, when they put the lessons together like that. But there are two different stories in two different places. And the first one is Jesus having a kind of an argument in the hearing of the Pharisees. You know, the Pharisees are overhearing the gospel, as one author has said. And that Jesus is talking to other people, but they're listening. And so he's trying to describe, it, it's not whether you wash your hands, it's how you treat people. It's, it's not whether you use the right pot to cook your meat in so that you didn't boil your cheese in it when you were making cheese. It's what you're thinking about other people and, and, and what you're thinking about doing. You know, theft, adultery, all that kind of stuff. 
And that's what makes you a righteous person. Now, in these days of COVID-19, you still have to wash your hands, all right? So Jesus, when Jesus says, it's not because you don't wash your hands that you're, you're pure. No, you still need to wash your hands these days, or at least use hand sanitizer. But whether you forget to or not does not make you acceptable to God. And the proof of that is in this encounter in the very next story, the very next time, with this Canaanite woman who is annoying. She is not a well-behaved woman. In other words, she's a woman who gets things done. She keeps shouting at the disciples, Jesus, make her leave us alone. And he tries to ignore her because his mission, first and foremost, is to Israel. To get that planting done before the message expands beyond Israel. And yet this woman does something peremptory. Next week. We're going to get Peter's great confession. The first time in the Gospel of Matthew that Jesus is proclaimed as the Christ, the Son of the living God, the Messiah. That's next week. Next chapter. Next story. But this week, this Canaanite woman, calls on Jesus and calls on him with names that are messianic titles. Son of David and Lord are messianic titles that happen before Peter gets to his revelation and great confession. It's a foreign woman who announces the messiahship of Jesus before any of the disciples. Catch that? It's not the right order of things. It's not the way you think it ought to go. Peter should have done this in chapter 12, and then we could get on with the rest of the story, and now it all makes sense because we know who Jesus is. It's this Canaanite woman who recognizes Jesus in chapter 15 before Peter can get to her, can get to Jesus in the next story. And she finally breaks through the crowd and she gets to Jesus and she says, you know, can't you heal my daughter? She's desperate to help her daughter. Can't you heal my daughter? And he says, you know, I can't take what I'm supposed to give here and throw it away over here until, it's, until we're done. And, and back in biblical times, they didn't have a lot of silverware. If you were lucky, you had a spoon. You had to carve that out of a piece of olive oil. But the way it ate was everything was kind of a stew, unless it was a piece of roast meat that you ate with your fingers, you know, kind of like fried chicken. And everything else was a bowl or a stew or a kind of a thick soup. And so bread was very important because bread was your tool. And you would, uh, the bread was flat and you would break that bread and you would use it as a scoop to get that stew out. And so everybody didn't have their own plate. You had a bowl in the middle of the table and everybody had a piece of bread. And kids, you know, if you've had kids in the house, kids drop things. This is why we have dogs. Because right? <laughs> it saves mopping the floor, right? When kids drop things. So you either put a plastic tablecloth under the high chair or you get a dog. That's, that's the easiest way to do it. But more than that, in rich households, when they were done, they could take the leftover bread and wipe the grease from their fingers and throw it on the floor and the dogs would eat the bread. And this Canaanite woman, this foreigner, this annoying woman who keeps shouting at them, 
And Jesus says, you know, I can't take the bread from the children's table and throw it to the dogs. And she said, yeah, but even the dogs get to eat what falls off the table. There's still some sustenance there, even if it's only by accident. This is a smart woman. She probably should have been a theologian. She probably should have been down in the, in the temple arguing with Jesus with the elders. But first of all, she's a woman. And second of all, she's a Canaanite. And they weren't even going to let her in the building. So she's a good theologian. And Jesus just sits back. And, and I imagine he kind of chuckled a little bit and says, no. Yeah. Even these guys haven't figured this out yet. Go home. Your daughter's healed. And this Canaanite, foreign woman, receives grace. And that's the theme all through these lessons today. That when Israel gets back and starts to rebuild and can rebuild the temple, other folks, foreigners, will come and receive grace. In the letter to the Romans, it's that the Jews haven't been kicked out, it's that we have received grace and been brought in. And then these stories, and especially this second one of this Canaanite woman who receives grace even though she is not one of the chosen people. She's not one of the people that Jesus is initially sent to by his father. But still, it is grace. And when we get blinders on and start to think about folks who are different from us as the other, as them, as the people who are wrong, they can only see it our way. I had an aunt used to say, a great aunt used to say, you know, if people would just do what I tell them, there'd be a lot less fuss in this family. <laughs> when we start to see politics and color and language and all of those things that make us step go, step back and say, mm, I don't know, can I trust that person? When we start to see them as children of God and part of the family of God and brothers and sisters in Christ and us, then we're starting to understand grace. We're starting to understand what it means for all of us to come to God's holy mount, to come to the temple and be welcomed by those who are already there. We're starting to see us as the Canaanite woman who is welcomed into Jesus' followers. As we say, Lord, this is a messed up place right now. Help us out. I learned something this, this week. That 2020 has now become, um, and, and I'm going to, Jane's not here, so I can get away with this maybe. I, I think it's become an adverb. Uh, or maybe it's a verb. I'm a little fuzzy on how this is used. But when something really bad happens to somebody, what some people are starting to say is, oh man, you got 2020. Because 2020, it's been a bad year so far. I mean, we got murder hornets. You know, live in Washington State. They got COVID going crazy. They got forest fires. Now they got murder hornets or murder wasps up there that somehow snuck in from Japan on some fruit or something. And we had an earthquake in North Carolina. Who has earthquakes in North Carolina? It hasn't happened for like 50 years. It's an earthquake in North Carolina last week. Man, you got 2020. And it's only August. You know? 
we're due for like six feet of snow in November or something ridiculous <laughs> like that. Like, we got 2020 here. And we're saying, Lord, help us out. Jesus, you know, send her away. They keep, they keep yelling at us. No. We get to talk. We get to be welcomed and held on to. And even though it's bad, God takes us by the hand and says, no, don't worry, I'm going to walk with you. I know it looks scary. Looks like the valley of the shadow of death. There's a joke I heard this week. It said, uh, Preacher said, how, how, how you, and somebody said, how you doing? He says, oh man, he said, it's bad. He said, uh, I was sitting at my desk and, and the window behind me, the curtain rod fell down and hit me on the head and I hollered from my staff and I said, help, help. And they thought the building was on fire. My secretary and my custodian ran out. <laughs> and she said, so your rod and your staff didn't comfort you this morning. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's in today's paper, actually. You can read it yourself. Yeah, the rod and my staff, they come for me. We get through it. God is still there. We may not see it. We may not recognize it. We may not feel it. But that doesn't change the fact that it's true. Kind of like gravity. I haven't touched gravity lately, but I also haven't flown off into space, so I know we're good. God is still there. And God is still with us. And even when we get 2020, God says, yes, but you're part of my family. And don't be fooled by all this noise. But look to your heart. Look to how you welcome others. And welcome them as you have been welcomed. Now we got the door locked because of safety reasons, but that door stays open until right when the service starts. For anybody who comes. So all are welcome in this place. Because God welcomed us when we weren't sure what was going on and built us into a family and told us to invite other people to come as well. Be they Babylonians or Egyptians that come to God's holy mountain or Canaanite women who stand at the crowd and yell, Messiah Christ, Son of David, have mercy on All are welcome because God has welcomed us. Please stand and join with me in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, our lives, and all that you have given us. 
We thank you for the love and mercy you so graciously pour out upon us daily. Help us to keep the Sabbath and to show that same love and mercy to those we meet, especially those who are struggling with homelessness, unemployment, addiction, and loneliness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Jesus, in your short life here on earth, you welcomed all. As your followers, open our hearts and minds to be welcoming to our brothers and sisters of all races, religions, and orientations. Quell the political divisions and anger rampant in our country. End the violence and destruction that has overtaken communities throughout this land. Heal our people so that we may be a better and united state of America. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, guide and inspire your church, our bishops Elizabeth and Matthew, and Pastor Tim, as he strives to lead Grace Lutheran during these unprecedented times of COVID-19. Keep us together in purpose and spirit while we are apart. Keep us pure in heart and strong in faith. Protect medical, law enforcement, rescue and fire and military personnel working to save lives and grant us all your presence when we are afraid. Lord, in your mercy, as school resumes in the coming weeks, in classrooms or in homes, provide the necessary materials for all students to receive proper instruction. Help teachers planning curriculum in new and uncertain ways. Be with children who will struggle to learn difficult subjects in unfamiliar ways and sustain their parents who have suddenly become teachers this year. Bring an end to this virus so that lives may regain some normalcy in the months ahead. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Now we lift up the names of those on our prayer list who have requested our prayers. For whom else and what else should we pray this day? Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O oh God, we praise you for your precious gift of love and lift before you Dave and Krista Klein as they begin their life together as husband and wife. Bless their time together, bring them into this congregation, and strengthen their relationship with you through our welcome. Watch over them and give them guidance in the days and years ahead as they live their lives in you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for our president and legislators our governor, all those who guide our, the decisions to keep us safe. Especially we pray this day for our president and his family as they grieve the loss of his brother. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. So into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels and the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord, Lord God, God of power and might, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. 
broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Amen.